How are you all tonight? I'm excited to be here. And um, I'm going to speak to you very shortly. I started the business on the 3rd of August, 1998, in my father's living room. In 1999, my grandmother had a few shops that she had let out. And I begged her to kick someone out and give me a space. I did not have the money to pay for it, so I could not rent. But I promised her that in two years, I'll make good on my rent. I would answer if I did or not for now. I will bring my story into focus using five simple, I like, I usually like using alphabets a lot. And today, I thought about the word C's, so I decided to use S's for my thought process to share with you. How am I sitting here tonight on the 26th day of February and telling myself by the 26th day of December 2017, when we are celebrating Boxing Day, I will look back and say, I seized an opportunity in 2017. I'll tell you my story. When I see the various opportunities I've had in my life and how I've grasped them, from when I was a young banker, management trainee in a bank, to when I got my first job, I was barely 21 years old, and my boss had to leave his role for a reason, and I was posted there as a management trainee. And I had to oversee a bank of over 50, a branch of over 50 something, with people who were much older than me, people who had been in the bank for about 30 years. To when I had the opportunity to build Alio, to when I had the opportunity to speak at a first major conference, to when I had the opportunity to coach a president. I can give you so many, but I look at one underlying thing that cut across all those opportunities. And those are the five things I want to quickly share with us tonight. The first point is the word self. Usually, your opportunity comes from a story, your own story, that you would tell, that somebody would buy. Another opportunity could, opportunity could come from an experience that somebody told you about that inspired you. The third opportunity could come from someone sharing knowledge with you. But every single time an opportunity has come, it always has asked me something. Who am I? Have you ever had the opportunity to assess yourself? In image, there's a concept called self-awareness. I remember how my story happened and my self-awareness. My mother traveled to my, with my father to the UK. On that journey, she met a lady. Anybody who knows my mother, who would hear this, remembers her. She used to be known and described as Angel. She is a girl, and her family members used to call her Bofo, because she looked amazingly beautiful, if I should say so myself. Whenever she walked into the room, she carried a certain presence. So knowing my father, who was little, short, 5'5", five, five, stocky, round man, always liked to have my mother travel with him. Everywhere he goes, he always says, she's my validation. <laughs> He'll be walking ahead, she'll be walking behind. She'll be walking beside him. So they went on one of these trips to the UK. 
We stood at the airport expecting them back from their trip. So my mother and my dad were coming and we're so excited and we're all at the airport and we're waving. My father came down and my mother was coming right behind him. And as soon as she got out and the sun hit her, all we heard was screams. And I want you to imagine this. Screams and we didn't know what was happening. So they rushed there to grab her and they rushed her to the car. When we got to the car, what we saw was my mother's face peeling off, lifting. Her whole, what is called in beauty, epidermis, that the skin had lifted off and we could actually see fat under her skin. So we asked what happened and she kept screaming. And all she could say was, that lady, that lady, but we didn't hear what it was. We rushed her to the hospital. They tried everything. Her skin was burnt. The person who was called the angel had lost a major part of her skin, facial skin, and every part of her shoulder. And she said, a lady walked up to her who was very good friends with her. She comes from another country, and they, whenever they travel, they meet her. And the lady said, you're very beautiful, but I want to show you something you can use to be even more beautiful for your husband. And she said the lady gave her the cream and told her to apply it overnight. That when she woke up in the morning, that she would have a new face. Mind you, this can happen to anybody. It wasn't that she was just ignorant. She just didn't know she trusted a friend. Not knowing this thing had mercury and high levels of hydroquinone. So it actually peeled her skin, which is what people call bleaching today. So what happened was when the sun hit her, the hardness began to melt and it destroyed her face. When she came home, my mother went into depression for many years. Up until today, my mother has never been the same. She struggled with mental illness. She struggled with pain. She struggled with going out in public. She struggled with alcoholism because one cream touched her skin. But I remember the day I said to myself, I want to help people not to ever change their looks to look like mommy again. That was the first seed of Allure. That was my opportunity. Because it was in my system, even as I went through school, undergrad, postgraduate, whatever I did, every single month I took a course. Whether it be beauty therapy, whether it be skin care, whether it be spa, for two straight years I took a course. I would go to school, go to work, and then take a course. All I was building up was to understand the dynamics of skin care, wellness, and spa. I seized that opportunity then, and that is what you see today. When it comes to self-awareness, you need to identify your highlights and your lowlights. Even though I went into banking for years, I still knew deep inside that this is what I was passionate about. Lifestyle, changing lives, transforming lives. I know as you sit here today, there's something in yourself. You may have sat somewhere and heard, you may have read something on social media, you may have just read an article and it prompted something in you. You felt sad about a situation. You felt sorry for someone. Go back there. There may be a strength there that is leading you to your next opportunity. 
The next thing I want to talk about is sight. When I talk about opportunities, I think of the word see to seize. Before you can seize an opportunity, you have to see the opportunity. But I have a clause for you. Look everywhere, but don't take everything. So in opportunities, you must look everywhere for it, but don't take everything you find. It means that you can, this year, go to 10 programs that has, that is like dots, that can inspire you, that would provoke you, but out of the 10 programs, there may only be one you need that would give you that opportunity. Don't ever stop looking. Look everywhere. See any opportunity. See any problem. See any pain. See any provocation. But don't take everything. My story in Alois, I started as a saloon because when I came, everybody told me, this is your spa thing, skin care, it doesn't exist. But after a while, I realized, no, I have to have sight that gives vision that takes the opportunity. The next S is spot. So after you have seen the many opportunities, you have to pick a spot. What did I do? After moving fully into the spa industry, I decided that what is my space? This is what I call it. Find your space and claim your place. That spot. Meaning that once you find your space, there's going to be many other people there. If there's nobody there, trust me, very soon, there will be many other people there. A lot of us have been pioneers in our spaces, but it didn't take months for somebody to do the same thing. So what I call your spot is your space, but then you've claimed a place. What did I do with Alio? My strategy was simple. As soon as I started the spa concept, everybody started adding spa to their name. So it was now Saloon and Spa. It was now Bessie Spa. It was now Mabel Spa. It was now Akosuyas Spa. Whether they understood it or not, they put their name Spa. So I decided, how do I claim my space? How do I claim my place? And I said, who am I? Alio Spa is a day spa. So we said, we are going to name ourselves Alio Spa in the city because we are a day spa. Criteria-wise, we only see people from morning to night. You don't come to Alio Spa and have overnight services. When you come, whatever you would do, you would get the same spa services, but it's between morning and closing time. But then there are destination spas that you can go and spend the night. So I realized that in that same space, you could do what? Claim your place. So to seize opportunities this year, begin to think in the space where I'm thinking of going, in the space where I am, in the space that things are happening that I'm interested in, where is my place? And you know what I did? After I did Alio Spa in the city, I put light on it, meaning that I branded it so that people will know that in the spa space, Alio is the light. That is what we call spotlight. So when you move from spot, the next thing you need to do is what I call soul. S O W. 
You see, everything you do that has opportunity in it requires sacrifice. When I started Alio in my father's living room with two people, I found a secret that I use even today. The first month, Alia did not have a client. I remember I used to always stand outside looking for clients. I found none. And then a great idea popped in my head. Why don't I stop people who are passing? Ask them if they want to do services and use them to market what we have. So one day I stopped the lady and I said, I think I would like to do your hair for you. She said, really? I said, yeah, I can do a very nice style. And then I said, I'll do it for you. And it's free. She said, really? OK. She put her bag and whatever down, quickly came in. And she said, someone say me today. Let me say yes. We quickly did her hair for her. And then we sent her. We asked her, do you have any sisters? She said, no, I don't have a sister. But I have a cousin who sells kinky or something. Down. I said, kinky. Perfect. You know the kinky people down the road? Because at that time, I was desperate. Any client will work. So I pick her cousin who sold kinky, and I put her in nice clothes. I did her hair, and I put her at the junction. And the first day people saw her, they were like, what? This girl looks good. Do you know what happened? A lady who was driving to come and buy kinky for her family saw her hair and said, wow, you're looking different today. She said, yes, I've been to the salon. And the lady was like, wow, where did you go? I like your hairstyle. So she showed the lady my house. And that was our first client. I remember when she came in, she said, I'll pay you whatever amount. Just give me that lady's hairstyle. The secret is sewing. Sometimes it is not to start up a business, but we do things to give to people. So when I talk about sewing, I mean serving people. I mean supporting people. I mean standing by people. As business people, we always look to sew up. But I want to tell you, sometimes sew at parity, sometimes sew below parity. Sometimes just sewing, just giving to people for free just giving someone a hug. A lot of times, sewing opens many doors. Serve anybody that you can. At this level, they will tell you, call me to serve, I will serve. The opportunity to serve in any situation, at any time, would always come. Don't run from it, So, The next and the final one is sell. Once you know yourself, you package yourself. Once you see past and see far, you package yourself. Once you spotlight, you position yourself. Once you sow, you consolidate your position. After you finish, you become attractive. I realized that when you prepare yourself, you package yourself, you position yourself, you don't need to sell yourself because people buy you naturally. So when I talk about your cell, if you have your preparation right, you have your packaging right, you have your positioning right, you will sell. Remember these words, provocation brings promotion. What provokes you is what will promote you. Self-awareness is the bedrock of confidence. 
When you know yourself, you will be confident. All I want to leave you with tonight is that you have what it takes. Think of what I have said. Very few people think and do. A lot of people think and imagine. Thinking is the same as praying. You are thinking and you are praying. Imagination is dreaming. The final step is doing. To be influential, the only difference is moving from praying and dreaming to doing. That desire that was burning in me to change lives, to help people not to ever become like my mother, is what has led me today to be standing here speaking to you and serving you. It's that same thing that led me to learn soft skills. It's that same thing that led me to be a coach. It's that same thing that led me to be on TV, transforming lives with the Djibouti Show. You have it in you. I'm no different. Just do what you are thinking right now. I know as I'm speaking, a thought has come into your mind. I may not be the one, it may be your next session, or it may have been the session before. But whatever that provocation is, go back to it. Find it now, look for it. And then when the opportunity comes, speak, write clear words, and be well packaged, and that opportunity will be yours. Thank you.